right, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior. And his name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahavashai, Bahasham, Wahavaka Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahavashai. In who I reverence and honor to the elder apostles of Great Mill, so that taught me this truth and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. It's going to be a post post camp lesson and Lord willing, Lord Ratiza, it will be edifying. Okay, it may come across as a bit harsh, but those that have ears to hear, they're going to hear this and they're going to receive it. I'm not saying this out of no place. Look, when we're in this truth, you're going to have brothers that come into this truth. But they're not going to have that passion. They're not going to have that zeal to keep going. They're going to get fed up. They're going to get bored. You cannot get bored. If that means finding something else to do within the scriptures, you do that. Change it up. Switch it up. If that what keeps you going. But the ultimate thing is predestination. I want to go to um, Hebrews 3 and 12. We're going to start off on that first. Okay. This is Hebrews 3. And we're going to go straight to verse 12. And this is, is Yahweh Yahweh that has me bringing this out again. Take heed, brethren. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart. Evil heart is mine from what the word love. So men, the evil mind, the evil heart comes when what unbelief sits in. And what does that unbelief turn into? Evil, wickedness in departing from the living power. Okay. But exhorting one another daily. So this is why we, it's, yes, it is very important to exhort one another daily. Why it is called day. Today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And it's a sin. If you've been called into this truth, I'm not, this, ain't, this lesson ain't for the brothers and sisters that, that are not supposed to be doing this work. This is speaking for men in camps. Men that are supposed to be doing the work. Right? Because, again, the deceitfulness of sin is you not doing the work, you not laboring, you not studying, you not praying. Yahabashai said to Peter, what did he say? If you love me, feed my sheep. He said that three times. That's a commandment. So this is what we have to do. Right? And this is the thing, you can't hold another man up. You can do that for only so long. If he doesn't have it, he doesn't have it. No matter how many likes you put on his video, now, how many times you say good video, and that's good because it's exhorting a brother. But you have to tell a brother, tell him the real deal. Don't lie to him. Okay, let's go to Bermuda. Now we're going to go to Matthews 12 and 43. Get straight to the point. You know, I've seen these things happen plenty of times, but nobody really wants to uh, speak on it. Big ass elephant in the room. And people see what's going on, but they won't say anything. Let's go to Matthew 12 and 43. Okay. You have a shy of the disciples. They were what? Casting off demons. Casting out demons. Okay. So you've got to be able to do that. Not just leave it. Not be comfortable with it. Let's go to Matthew 13 and 43. 12 and 43. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man... The unclean spirit is the spirit that leaves you when you first hear about the truth. That was the unclean spirit. And it's many different things, things you were doing in the world. And mostly the unclean spirit is the spirit of the world, is the defilement of the world. Whatever you were doing, whatever ambition you had, whatever, however you were living. So it says it's gone out of a man. That's when you wake up to the truth. You become clean. He walk you through dry places. So that spirit leaves and goes what through dry places seeking rest and finding none so that spirit that left you is seeking rest so it's always there always and findeth none right so it's looking for what an habitation it's looking for a vessel because spirits don't die they live on especially evil spirits as well 
Okay, they don't die. They just habitate what an, an, another force, another vessel. Look around. Look, look, look out into the world. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. Why does it return? Because it's waiting for an opportunity to get back in. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept and garnished. Type in this word garnish. Decorated. So your mind becomes decorated with what? Demons. Okay, cleaned out. Reinforced. It brings other reinforcements. Furnished. Okay. Why? Because you wasn't thinking about the truth. And I always say this. It does even if you're not doing a video, two days, three days, make sure you're studying. Make sure you're reading. Make sure you're thinking about the scriptures. Because if you have a shame on your mind, then guess what's on your mind? The things of the world. And that's how Satan gets all up in there. Right? Then you're going to start making excuses. And it says, find if it empty, swept and garnish. Satan finds it emptied. Completely. Right? Completely emptied. Then go with he and take it. With himself, seven other spirits. More wicked than himself. Seven other. Because the first one, what? It brings reinforcements. It brings his buddies. Right? And they enter in and dwell there. So it dwells what upon your what your mind. So they enter in. And that's seven. That's completion. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. That's legion. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. You're in a worse state than you were before you even came into the truth. Because you didn't want to listen. Because you didn't want to take heed. This ain't to get on in. This ain't personal. And if you're feeling a particular way, fix it now. These are admonitions. You're in a worse state than before. And sadly to say, that's, that's already happened to certain men. No, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say names, but it's already happened. Keep your mind. If you can, try to do something every day. You're not doing a video, try to do something that's pertaining to you thinking about the truth or reading a chapter at least a day. Scripture a day, what keeps us, keeps them spirits away. Okay. And it says, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So this would not be referring to a man that's of the elect. Because it says, even shall it be even also unto this wicked generation. So these things happen to what? A wicked generation that don't what? Believe. Because it's a wicked generation that didn't believe. And that generation's always been, always been here since what? Moses. Okay, this is serious business. And you wonder why men, they, every other video, they get overtaken by demons. They're not fighting, they're doubtful. Because they're being overtaken. So you see this, you don't agree with it. And the only reason you would agree with it, because you're in that same spirit. So now you can't rebuke, you don't want to rebuke it, because you're in that same spirit. Go to Ecclesiastes 33 and 27. Better start fearing you have a shy. <laughs> 33 and 27. Yeah, and we do know as well, we know that a man may say, well, the scripture say, and what's it, Matthew 7, 7 chapter on down. Not all that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. They sh and they shall say, um, didn't we do many wonderful works? Yeah, that's true. But then you've got you to gotta ask yourself, why did, did you have a shy say that? Why did he say that? Because it was those that were doing the work deceitfully. Okay. So it still applies even with this. Because they were doing the work deceitfully. Because you've got men that still go out. But their mind is not really there. It's not really focused on salvation. It's focused on the world. So they were doing the work deceitfully. Okay. And that's why Yahweh said, I never knew you. Depart from me. Because they were not doing his will. Go to Ecclesiastes 33. Okay. And 27. Bear me just a minute. Let's start at 25. If thou set thy servant to labor, thou shalt find rest. And that's what we're here to do. And that's what you have shall set us to do to labor. Okay. The harvest is plenty, but what the labors are few. Excuse me. Excuse me. But if thou let him go, go idle, he shall seek liberty to do his something else. A yoke and collar do bow the neck, and this, this wisdom is what a yoke and collar to our neck discipline. So are the tortures and torments for an evil servant. So when you hear about things happening to brothers, 
you know, whether it's a car crash, whether they, they passed out into in the street or whatever. The scripture says Tor tortures and torments for an evil servant. You may even start seeing apparitions. Oh, I saw spirits. I saw yeah, because the Lord's sending that because you're not paying attention. And it says for an evil servant. Send him to labor that he be not idle. And this also goes into, yes, also working. Because if you don't work, you don't eat. But more so spiritually. That ye be not idle. Right? For idleness teacheth much evil. So when you're idle, idle goes into lazy, remissness. It teacheth much evil. So what ends up happening? Men start what turning evil. Start becoming evil. And what is this? Just like who? Sal. Sal had an evil spirit on him. Okay? And it would go and it would come back. And it was what? A distressing spirit. Right? And this is what's happening in the truth. Men try to ignore it, but this is what's happening. And if you don't see it, then you're bloody blind. Okay? Fear Yahawashai. Now we're going to go to Matthew 25 and 26. Okay, bear me just a minute. About that talent and what Yahawashai replied. Bear me just a minute. Matthew 25 and 26. Hold on, this is taking some time. Alright, we're going to jump straight to... I'll go straight to the point. Right? I need to speed up as well because this is... um, It's timing out. Let's quickly go to Matthew 6. Make this quick. Matthew 6 and... 20... Here it is, here it is, verse 24. Remember he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid. And when he hid that talent in the earth. So this was a what? A fearful servant. But that, that fearfulness should have moved him to what to do the work. And now David, that is dying. So he was afraid. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strawed. Right? So the scripture says, wicked and slothful. It's not me saying this, it's the scripture saying this. See, how is I saying this? Wicked and slothful. You're slothful, you're wicked. A man may read this and say, Are you are you serious? Just because a man is not given his all, does that make it yes? And I've seen this time and time again. And then what do they do? They end up having a wicked eye towards their brother. Because their brothers may be in the right spirit, but they're not in the right spirit. Then it spreads. It spreads. And that word for slothful is remire. Um, slack, remiss, deceitful, treacherous. So you don't want men like that around you. You don't. You're going to warn them. But if it continues, you don't want them around you. Because they're going to start working evil towards you. Servant, newest where I reap, where I sow not, and gather where I have not straw. That ought is therefore that I put my money to the exchanges, and that my coming I have received my own with usury. Take there from the talent from him and give it unto him that have ten talents. And this is spiritual. Because the talent is a gift. But once your talent's taken from you, what is it? Because your talent is your spirit. Your talent is a part of your spirit, your gift. So that's what Yahushai does. He revokes what spirits from men that never took this seriously. A man may see this well, it doesn't really matter. Two, three, four days, uh, it's fine. But I've seen it. Sometimes it gets to four days, then it two weeks and you see, oh boy, whole nother spirit now. You even got a different countenance. Right? These are the things that are happening. Take heed to what the spirit is saying. Read these scriptures for yourself. Okay. Is there anything else? We are shut off on this as well. Because it's saying about man, don't just do it because the elder apostles or even because I'm telling you to do it. It should be in you to do it. Because you fear your Hawashai, and really this should become, it's, it's in you, it's a part of you, it's in you, right? It's not just something you do on Saturdays. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 24 and 19. I need to get out of here, I need something to eat. <laughs> Maybe just a minute. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, right? There's a lot of individuals in the truth like that. They only fear the eyes of men, what men think, right? And that's why... Even me, this couple of weeks, for the last couple of weeks now, 
there's particular things where I'm not doing as much as I would usually do, but I still have that passion by the spirit and power of Yahweh of Ashai, right? I still have that fear, okay? Such a man only fear the eyes of men, but there's other men that only fear the eyes of men. They can only do videos when it's like a backdrop or some type of contention. So that shows you what spirit men are in, okay? And know if not that the eyes of the Lord Yahweh are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. That's why you want to fear Yahweh because the angels are watching, beholding all the ways of men and considering the secret parts. So knowing that, that's enough to move you to what to do this work, right? Take heed. Until the next time, Shalom.